This lesson is an introduction to the most popular shell program of Linux users. It is, in fact, the shell program that's installed by default for each new user added to the system. You are looking at the output from the shell program right now. The most fundamental task of the shell is to prompt the user for input, then read the input, interpret what it means, and obey the command that was entered. The most common form of a command is the name of a program. A program name is entered on the command line. The shell goes and finds the program and starts it running. A simple example of this is the ls program that I introduced to you in the first lesson. Another example of this is the man program, which accepts a single argument on the command line. The original shell program was the born shell. The name of the born shell program is SH. The Linux version of this program is the born again shell, and the program itself is named BASH, so it's often referred to as Bash. Bash is completely compatible with the original born shell, but it has lots of stuff added to it. There have been lots of other shells. Most well known are the C shell, CSH, and the corn shell, KSH. Both of these were improvements on the original born shell, but they also introduced variations that turned out to be more of a bother than a help. Bash is completely compatible with the born shell, which is probably one of the main reasons for its popularity. A shell program is called a shell program because it provides a shell around the operating system that you can use to send messages to the system and receive messages from it. Like most software metaphors, it's not a very good one, but that's where the term comes from anyway. The shell program itself has some commands built into it. For example, the simple echo command is part of the shell. All it does is output everything that's provided as input for it on the command line, like this. Now this command is just as simple as it seems, but you'll be surprised how often it comes in handy, like right now when I'm going to use it to show you how the command line stuff works. Earlier, when I was describing the find command, I said the shell program had a special attitude about certain characters than when you type them in on the command line. Using this echo command, let me show you what happens to an asterisk. When the shell program comes across an asterisk on the command line, it translates it into a list of files and directory names. It looks at the names in the current directory and replaces the asterisk with whatever it finds, sorted in alphabetical order. This is my home directory and you can see that I have a tendency to collect junk. Now this is important. It is the shell that does the command line interpretation, not the echo command. Any command you enter followed by an asterisk is going to be given this kind of list of names. You can use this asterisk notation in combination with other characters to refine the list. For example, you can limit the list to only those names that end with the letter Y by doing it this way. Remember the regular expression thing I talked about earlier? Well, that applies to just about everything in Linux, including the command line interpretation. For example, to include the names of everything beginning with either an uppercase or a lowercase m, you can do this. And you can use an asterisk on the front and back at the same time. This is a listing of all of the names that contain the letter Z. Now, Bash is the most common shell, but any user can be assigned any shell program. You may recall from a previous lesson that the etc password file that contains all the login information is the file that assigns shell programs to the users. Here's a quick way to look at my login line in the password file. The end of the line, the very last field, is the name of my default shell program, which is in the bin directory, and it's named bash. 
This directory contains system level executable programs such as SU, DF, and LS. It also contains some shell programs, including Bash. Shell programs generally end in SH, so you can list their names this way. As you can see, some of these are symbolic links. Using the file command shows us more detail. Now you can see what is linked to what. Exactly what you have may vary from one version of Linux to the next, but this layout is fairly standard. The original born shell, normally called SH, is renamed ASH on Linux. The name SH is a symbolic link to Bash, and when you run it as SH, it remains strictly compliant to the original born shell. Also here you will see a shell named CSH. This is the C shell. It uses a syntax that's different enough that things that work in the born shell won't always work in the C shell and vice versa. Some people use the C shell but it seems to be falling out of favor. If you want to find out more about it you can use the man utility with the name TCSH like this. That's all I'm going to say about the seashell except that there are people that use it and if you work with Linux long enough you'll come across it. Oh yeah, one more thing. An environment variable named shell is set to the name of your default login shell. I'll be explaining environment variables in the next lesson.